Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus, and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is day 59, almost at 60. Reading the Word of God is a basic discipline that we must develop. We have to have that in the bag because it's the Word of God that reveals the mind of God. It's through the Word of God that we get to know who God is, what God thinks about, what God values, what God is doing, what He has done, what He wants to do. Our destiny is revealed in the Word of God. The Word of God and the Spirit of God go hand in hand. They never contradict one another. We need to know what thus saith the Lord especially in these last days. We are living in the last days. You may have heard people say, these are the last days. Things are gonna get worse and worse, but the word of God is gonna stay the same. It's gonna be powerful. And in order for us to overcome the enemy, to overcome temptation when the tempter comes, it's imperative that we know what the word of God says. This is why this Bible in a Year series can be very helpful. We're gonna move through the entire Bible as a community, share reflections, share thoughts, ideas, comment, whatever God is showing you. This will help us to be accountable and talking about the word will help to allow it to take root in our hearts. So that is a wonderful benefit. If you're just joining now, I want to encourage you, keep going with us. Join the journey right here with day 59 and let's move forward throughout the rest of the Bible. We're not too deep into the book yet. So if you feel like you want to go back to the beginning and catch up from day one, it's a little bit of a task now, but not impossible. If you have the mind and the will and the determination to do so, by all means, get wealthy in the word. But if not, don't burden yourself. Just pick up right here where we are. And let's get into the word of God. We are in the latter part of Psalm 27. And um, I've highlighted a few verses here that I want to mention and speak on that the Lord kind of nudged me or highlighted to me this morning. And they are found in verses 13 and 14. I'm reading from the King James Version. You, however, please feel free to follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are comfortable with. And the Bible says, Psalms 27, chap chapter 27, verse 13 and 14. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I want to go back to verse 13 and let's dissect. <clears throat> let's dissect that. <laughs> Help me, God, what has happened? Let's go to verse 13 and dissect that a little bit. The psalmist, we are now deep in that particular psalm because this, uh, part, this Bible plan has it broken up like that. And I'm not sure why. Sometimes I can see the wisdom in it and how the subjects correlate with the different books. And other times I just scratch my head and say, pressing forward. He says, I had fainted. Fainting happens when we are exhausted a lot of times. When we are weak, when we've been pressing and working and going and we're burnt out and we have nothing left to give. But when, when our mind and, and the drive of our mind exceeds the ability of the body to follow, we faint. When our will and our spirit is a lot stronger than our body can keep up with, we can faint. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, when we lose hope, 
when we forget about why we're doing what we're doing, when we lose sight of the prize, it's easy for us to faint. The psalmist said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. This shows us how powerful our faith is. What we believe. It's your belief that can carry you when you're physically weak, when you physically fall, when you become tired and exhausted. Your faith can carry you. Your faith can continue, can help you to continue press forward. Hope is powerful. Because if you don't think that there is going to be an end result that is in your favor, there's a blessing there. Something good is coming out of a bad situation. If you don't believe that, if you don't see that mentally, if you don't have that image or vision, how can you push? How can you press? It is the thing that fuels you, that gives you spirit, that gives you fight. And I had fainted unless I, I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. God's goodness. God has made promises, good promises, great promises. And some of these promises require some pushing, some pressing, some waiting, some fighting, some persevering, some prevailing, a lot of prevailing until we see them. Israel had to endure the wilderness before they got to the promise, before they could even see the promise. Then, after the wilderness, they had to endure some warfare, some fighting, some overcoming and conquering before they could possess the land. The promise was theirs at first. God said, this is yours. So the decree was made. Legally, it was theirs. They hadn't seen it yet, but they knew this is mine. Once they got to the promised land, they were able to lay eyes on it. I can see what the Lord was talking about. Some of us, after we make it through the wilderness, we get to the place to where, wow, we are on the borders of the promised land and we can see what God is talking about. We can start seeing glimpses of the promise, glimpses of the dream. And that becomes a motivating factor. Now I can see it. Before, I was walking around in what seemed like circles. Well, they were walking around in circles. I was walking around in circles. I wasn't seeing nothing. I'm going around the same place year after year, season after season. I'm seeing the same thing. Nothing is changing. Nothing is different. I see the same bush over here on the right side that I saw last year. The same mountain is over here in the distance that I saw last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that year before that year. It's the same mountain. It's the same little stream that we Cross, the same river that comes up on the left side, the same valley, the same shape of the rock. I'm seeing the exact same thing and there is no glimpse, no hope of what the promise is. I'm not seeing anything wandering around in circles. How easy would it have been to faint? And many of the Israelis did faint. They did die in the wilderness. All of those that didn't believe, God allowed them to wander around the wilderness until unbelief died off. It was the faith that carried through, faith that got them to the border of the promised land. So don't give up. I think that the wilderness can be a very difficult experience because you're strictly walking by faith. You're struggling with your unbelief. You're pushing and pressing to hold on to the promise, but you're not seeing anything. Some of you have been walking around in the wilderness in circles, seeing the same thing, this different year, same thing, same, same, same objects, 
same circumstances, same relationships, same old job, same old this, same old that, nothing's changing, same old little church, same old group of people that I'm trying to win, nothing is changing, I see no break, no difference, it's the same thing, just a different season, a different year, I'm getting older, it can be frustrating not to see, unless you believe and have hope, it's going to happen how easy it is to die in the wilderness. But when you see the promised land, when you start beginning to see little things, you're standing at the border, you're at the promise, you haven't possessed it yet, you've believed and your faith has gotten you to the place of promise. Now you can see what the Lord has been talking to you about. You're only at the border, so you can't survey the whole land. You don't see everything that's in the promise. But as far as the eye can see, you're getting glimpses of what the Lord had promised. When we get there, what a time of rejoicing it is. Because hope is boosted. Your spirit is elevated. You can start seeing little pieces Maybe you get a phone call to preach here, or maybe you get invited to do some evangelist work over there, or maybe you get to lead a Bible study. God starts showing you glimpses, using you a little here and a little there, and you know this isn't it right here. This is just a taste. You are at the borders of the promised land. Maybe at the job you get to lead a discussion or you get to lead a teaching or you get to lead a presentation and you're trying to make it up the ladder and now you're seeing a little bit breaking through. You get selected for a special project. You're seeing a little breaking through. Standing at the borders of the promised land. The psalmist said, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're not talking about in eternity after we die. We're not talking about in the next. We're talking about right now in this life, seeing the goodness of the Lord. But it requires us to walk by faith just a little bit. Who am I kidding? For some of us that are believing God for big things, you're having to walk by faith a whole lot. We got to keep the promise at hand. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. You're going to have to check your heart. You're going to have to check your attitude. You're going to have to check your motive all along the way. These things will be tested. Be of good courage. You are waiting on God. It's so easy to want to take matters into your own hands. Case in point, Abraham. Abraham wanted the promise so bad that he listened to his wife, Sarai, to go and take matters into their own hands and to bring it about. It's human nature. With God, waiting on God, what else are we going to do? We begin to forget like, hey, like you said you're going to do, did you forget about me? Oh, well, maybe God is waiting on me. This is one of the, I think this is one of the points that the enemy comes in to try to sabotage the plan because we're just sitting around. It feels like, man, we ain't doing nothing. What am I doing? I'm not doing anything pertaining to my calling. I'm not doing anything pertaining to the promise. God showed me that I was going to be doing this. I was going to be doing that. And right now, what, am, what I'm doing has nothing Nothing to do with that. I'm so far from where God said I would be. I'm not doing none of that. What is happening? Be of good courage. We have to wait on the Lord. God is going to bring it to pass. Sometimes the enemy will say, well, see, you're just sitting around doing nothing Maybe you ought to do this. Maybe God is waiting on you. Maybe nothing's happened yet is because you're supposed to take action. Let me ask you something. When you're waiting for something or someone, what are you doing? Some of you, <laughs> some of you, some of you sisters are waiting on your husband to do something that you've been asking him for months to do. You're waiting. <laughs> I know that's not funny to you, 
But praise God, that's just an example. Some of you brothers are waiting. We are all waiting on God. What do we do while we wait? Yeah, that's the hard part. What if God wants you to do nothing and just wait? What if your only job in waiting is be of good courage? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. What if that is your purpose? What if while you're waiting, the only thing that God expects you to do, don't, nope, nope, don't try to sleep with Hagar and produce a child, don't do that, wait. What if while waiting, all that God expects of you is be of good courage? Don't get afraid. Don't be fearful. Don't let the enemy talk you into doing something that's going to put your hands on the plan. Get your hands off the plan of God. Why is waiting so hard? Why is doing nothing so hard? <laughs> be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Don't try to take matters into your own hands. The promise is going to happen. But it will be God who does it. He's not asking for a hand in it. God empowered Abraham and Sarah to have that baby. God did it. And when God empowers you, that's when you do what you can, when you've been empowered by God. But until then, you wait and you be of good courage. You continue to believe, you fight the good fight. It's mental, it's emotional, it's spiritual. That's what God expects of us while we're waiting on him because it's easy to get discouraged. We don't see nothing changing. We see a little glimpse and then, oh man, that's it. A little glimpse there. Well, oh, man, that's it. I mean, where's the rest of it? Like, how, much, how much longer am I going to have to wait? Be of good courage. That'll keep you busy. <laughs> Being of good courage, that, that'll keep you busy. It'll keep you occupied while you're waiting to try to maintain a positive attitude, a spirit of expectancy. Hey, in the wait, you've got your hands full trying to keep your mind right and your spirit right and your faith up. Don't waste energy trying to bring it about. Just keep a good attitude. Keep your faith in check. And God is going to do it. Glory be to God. The Bible says in Isaiah, hmm, what, 54? Oh, God, help me. Well, look it up. They that wait on the Lord. I'm going to look it up for you. Pow, blue letter Bible. I love it. Okay, I misspelled a whole lot of things here. They that wait on the Lord. All right, why is that not there? Okay, renew their strength. Okay, I have misspelled. What in the world is happening here? All right, now do what I tell you. Okay, I was totally wrong. Isaiah 40, 31. Some of you knew that. You're chuckling. It's all good. It's, it's, it's cool. Peace be with you. Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What if that's a command? What if the Bible is saying, okay, you're going to have to wait on God. And while you do that, I'm telling you, you're going to need to continually renew your strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. What if the Bible is saying you're going to need to elevate your mind? You're going to need to elevate your hope. You're going to need to elevate your perspective because at, mm, staying down here, staying low and looking at things from a low place of, of sight from a low place of perspective. You're not going to get what I'm looking at because mm, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts is what God is saying. And if you're trying to see what I'm seeing from the low place where you're at in the perspective you are, you're going to doubt and you're going to faint with unbelief. So they that wait on the Lord, you have to renew your strength. 
You have to reinvigorate yourself. You have to keep your faith in check. They shall mount up with wings. You got to rise up to get to God's perspective in prayer, in worship, in thanksgiving, connecting with God. Let your spirit rise up so that you can get to the high place and see what God is seeing. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Some of this is going to require us to push and to press. Some of you, the reason why you're getting discouraged and frustrated is because you're looking at life and you're looking at your situation from a grounded perspective. You're looking at it from a low level of living. No, we have to elevate our mind, elevate our faith so that we can see from the high place that God is looking at our life at. This is what I believe the scripture is saying, or one of the many things that the scripture can say. But in this particular instance, the Lord is speaking. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Don't give up. Praise God Almighty. Hmm. This is just Psalms right here that we're in. Uh, just felt like the Lord just mm, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way right now, Jesus. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dwell here because this is where I feel the Spirit flow, and this is where I feel the Spirit moving. I don't want to go somewhere where the Spirit isn't moving. If God is moving right here on this topic, I don't want to switch up and go to what's on my agenda or what I think is going to happen. I want to keep it strictly organic. I want to flow in the Holy Ghost. So I want to encourage you. I know, I know that I'm talking to believers. Oh God, I know that I'm speaking to believers and the fact that you believe has put you in a place of frustration. Your frustration is evidence that you believe God. God said, I'm going to do this. And you're like, bet I believe that because I believe in God. So you begin to make moves based on your faith and you're not seeing what you know God said, and that, of course, that's going to be frustrating. Of course, that's going to be disheartening. Of course, that's going to leave room for doubt to come and attack. And why wouldn't doubt attack you when you realize, hey, man, I'm not seeing, I'm, I'm doing, I'm believing, I'm having faith, but I'm not yet seeing the promise. That's the opportune time for doubt to come. That's, that's the perfect time for fear to come. Remember, the enemy is strategic and he's seeking for an opportunity to devour. So he will wait. Look at, remember how lions hunt. They crouch. And some of them lurk and wait for their prey. They know he's going to be coming down, down this path right here. If I pause right here and crouch and wait for him at the right time, I can pounce, make my, make my kill, make my mark, get my prey. The enemy is the same way. He knows, oh, they're believing right now. They've got tremendous faith right now. It's evidenced by what they're doing. They're believing that God's going to save a hundred souls. They're out there trying to get a Bible study, but no one wants a Bible study. Now the word of God says you're going to teach a hundred Bible studies. You're out there looking for a Bible study. You've been out there for a month, maybe two months and not maybe one or two people are, have agreed to do a Bible study. And now you're starting to get frustrated. You're like, yo, what happened? God, you said that there's going to be a hundred people. I'm out here every day looking for people. I can't find nobody. The enemy sees that. He sees that you're getting frustrated and he's waiting. And one of those frustrated days is going to come. You did something wrong. You sinned. You're not right with God. This should have already happened. Look at all the opportunities. You missed them. You missed the mark. You missed what God is doing. This is how the enemy creeps into our life to lie to us. That's why 
We have to know the word of God. We must know what the word says so that we can combat that. No, devil, get behind me. God said that this and this is going to happen. And even though I don't understand what I'm seeing, even though my circumstance around me doesn't make any sense, I'm not putting my weight of faith on what I'm seeing. I'm trusting in the word of God and what I heard from heaven. This is how we overcome the enemy. And it is a perpetual warfare. It's not just a one-time thing, get behind me, no. You're, there might be days that the enemy comes nonstop all throughout the day. And he's gonna try to whisper to you, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. He'll stir up your emotions, your chemicals and whatnot and get you to feel in a certain type of way to help you to buy into his lies. The enemy uses your feelings to help buy into his lies. This is why we cannot rely on our emotions. One day we wake up and we feel like, yo, I'm gonna win a hundred souls a day. The next day we wake up and we're struggling, feeling like, man, I'm backsliding. God, am I gonna make it to see church on Sunday? Feelings and emotions. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone listening, everyone watching that's been waiting on you. Father, they have exhausted their faith. They've used their faith. They've pushed, they've pressed, God. They've persevered. They've prevailed over the enemy. The barrage has been continual and they've done everything that they can. And there is yet a little ways to go. In the name of Jesus, right now, I come against every power of darkness that would try to bring confusion I bind you in Jesus' name. I command the people of God to be loosed right now in the name of Jesus from every argument that would rise up against the word of God. Every cleverly devised argument of the enemy that would try to get them to doubt your word in Jesus' name. I command these to be broken right now. I command the darkness to be lifted right now in the name of Jesus. I decree that you are going to see in Jesus' name. I come against every plot, every plan, every strategy of the enemy, every snare, every trap that the devil would try to use to get you off of your path of faith. It's not going to prosper. In the name of Jesus, it's going to be destroyed. The enemy is going to be scattered. I decree, be renewed right now in your faith. Be renewed right now in your strength. In Jesus' name, by his spirit, be strengthened right now with might in the name of Jesus. Let the weariness be lifted off of you right now. Be renewed in your vision. Be renewed in your hope in Jesus' name. I pray for peace to come upon you now and for rest to come upon you. That the spirit of the living God might make you to lie down in green pastures and rejuvenate your soul. Press on in the name of Jesus and be of good courage as you wait. Worship. God bless you all. Grace be with you. And peace from God our Father, in Jesus' name.